There must be thousands of visitors coming to Peel, to the house of Mananan here, a building which is dedicated to Manx history. Thousands of them have come here and very few of them, I would suggest, would realise that part of this complex is 90 years older than the rest of it. The building behind me was the Isle of Man Railway Terminus Station for Peel and this was built in 1908. The rest of the complex here was 1998. The railway closed in 1968 it opened in 1873 and of course the railway coming to Peel revolutionised the town. It made it so that it was cheap and it was half an hour to get from Peel to Douglas on the train and that was a tremendous advance. Behind me is the front of the station and underneath the semicircular arch is the double doors of the station where passengers went through the doors there, paid their fare to get to Douglas and that was the front entrance. Now this particular view is exactly the same as it was designed so it's marvellous that the actual station proper has not been touched at all. We've just come round the corner from the front of the station into Mill Road and just want to point out the sandstone parts of this window and how sandstone is quite easily eroded by wind and frost. Max National Heritage have solved that problem in that they have put a, a cladding of sand and cement which is dyed and they put on the outside which looks good but you can see the erosion there on there which is not a very good material to build with. On the other hand, it has lasted over a hundred years. We just walked along the pavement here in Mill Road and this is part of the 1908 goods shed. The Alleman Railway was not built for tourists, although the tourist industry was burgeoning at that time, but a lot of the income for the railways was through freight and so they had to send a lot of stuff from Peel to Douglas and they had a separate goods ship. And this is it. I'm surprised, surprised, even though it's only a goods shed, only a goods shed, it's got horizontal sandstone bandings. Pride in what the original architects were putting in. This is the loading sill where horses and carts or lorries would come quite close to here and unload their uh, goods onto this sill. They would then be trundled inside or on a flat level and at the other side here they would go straight onto the vans which were inside the goods shed, the railway vans, so that unloading the stuff was dead easy by doing it here. This block work here has replaced the big sliding doors which open to allow the goods to get in and out. Just down here there's a short length of railway track which was laid to try and get it in exactly the same place as the track was when the railway was running before 1968. Now the water tower behind me was built in 1908. It might have been built before then but it was certainly there in 1908. It's made of stone, the walls are about three feet thick and the tank itself is slate. And I'm sure you can see how thick the slate is. It's certainly the largest slate tank on the Isle of Man and possibly in Britain as well. Although that's just conjecture, I don't, we don't really know. The railway track went from here to St John's and on to Douglas. This was a single line that went into the station and as soon as you got past the imitation gates that we put here the tracks went on to go into the various platforms and the cattle dock and the engine shed etc. It was quite a close uh, constrained site for a, a railway terminus but it worked. Now on my right here is a railway coach which we saved, which was going to be destroyed by the railways because they couldn't think of what else they could do with it. It is just a body, there's no wheels underneath it and that's why we built the platform to hide the fact that there's no wheels there. But nevertheless, 
We want to make it so that people can get into the coach and just sit there and close their eyes and dream that one of these days the coach might move on its way to Douglas.